Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony and the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. I finally have completed the review process. It took a lot longer than what I wanted to, but I'm super excited about it and what's coming up next. So let's dive in. So I've been using the Threadripper chip here for a little while here and with uh, a new baby around it, it's taken me much longer than I anticipated to get out this review. But here it finally is, a little bit of the spec sheet on the Threadripper 1950X CPU here. 16 cores, 32 threads, 3.4 gigahertz base, a 4 gigahertz boost, and the XFR is up to 4.2, 64 PCIe lanes, 180 watt TDP, and quad channel DDR memory. So that that's pretty nice overall you're getting some of the high-end stuff intel's you know they, they don't even have 64 lanes on a lot of their stuff which is quite nice if you're going to use that uh, many pci lanes or go over what they have but yeah i've been quite impressed with this overall and i've been really excited about this processor since i got it i was you know, able to sell my 1800x to a friend of mine very happy he was he wanted to buy that as well but i've been using the ryzen Threadripper since then and for me it's worked out great. I, it's a great switch for me but I'm writing some software and I use it for compiling and then I also use it for rendering videos and stuff like that so I game on it a little bit but predominant main tasks are a lot more you know thread intensive tasks that I need to use that I or that I get to use more often so I've been very excited about this as well. Now I kind of want to dive into some of the spec sheets there, uh, there's uh, numbers I got from all the tests I've ran. And then I want to end, I got I get some power and some temperature ones as well from here. But I'm using this all on the MSI uh, Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard. I'm using, the, all the tests were on the BIOS it is 7B09V15. I'm also using just 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, they, I'm Trident Z, I believe it's, a block I can't remember exactly what that was but then I don't have and everything on here is stock I didn't overclock it I might come back and do that again do a review on that with more um, increasing the memory speeds and everything but I just kind of want to say if somebody put this together here's what you can expect and go from there um, but that's the range I'm also cooling this with the Corsair H100 IV2 it does a great job on cooling overall I've been actually super impressed with it I put some um, grizzly thermal grease on it it's been great keeps the temps quite reasonable i think for overall so that's a little bit on what the system setup is like here but let's dive into some cinnamon uh cinnabench benchmarks here and first off let's start off and i'll be comparing some of these with the 1800x but for the single thread score here it's uh 154 on the 1950x versus 153 on the 1800x so it's one point difference I'm trying to get my graphs to properly reflect that here, so I apologize for the difference, but they are super close. I want to make sure of that. It's one point difference, really nothing, anything major there at all. When you go to the multi-score on Cinebench, the multi-thread score, that's going to be 2,658 for the uh, 1950X, uh, and then 1800, the 1800X is at 15 99 so you get a quite a good increase there um very impressed with it overall it's not really double it's about a thousand eleven hundred points more but quite impressive overall and uh i believe that there probably might be some even more tweaking coming down that amd might do it might even help some of these scores especially with how the processor communicates that's like something to iron out you know this is the first gen of all this stuff for amd with zen so Either it's this or the next revision. I've I've been overall impressed with this revision considering where they were. I was going to throw in the old uh, 8150, I believe, FX processor, but then I looked at it and I said, it doesn't even compete with the single score, so it's not even worth it. Um, but it's quite impressive. But jumping over to CPU-Z, the single on there is, again, one point difference. The 1950X is at... 427.9 the 1800x is at 426.8 so again my graphs trying to make them so they look much better but uh bear with me while i work that out and i go hopefully the next generation as i keep adding more and more cpus they get ironed out here as well so i, I thank you for your patience for that but 
jumping into the CPU-Z uh, multi-score is the 1950X is at 8,772.4 and then the 1800X is uh, 4,598.1. I've ran most of the tests. I just picked the uh, middle one in these. So um, for uh, in the CPU-Z test here. And uh, this, again, you know, you're about... 4,200 points more, very impressive score overall, and I, I've been I've been impressed with it overall. I've been really surprised at how much more performance you get. Granted, you know you're spending a thousand dollars on the CPU versus the 1800X when it came out was 499. So, you know, there's that to it as well. But overall, this has been a great thing. Then I ran some uh, Time Spy on this, and I only have this score for the 1950X, but that's 4,545. So that's the score. I don't have any more scores. I wish I had more more CPUs I get in the future. I will make sure I test them more. Hopefully I'll have some more test benches as well rather than just using the daily driver behind me as well. But then if you jump to PC Mark 8 and I got the home here first. Now granted, you're probably, you know, this is a little stuff you're going to do with it. If you're buying, if you're spending $1,000 on a CPU, you're probably like me, have some objective that you really want to use a lot of threads on this because you got 32 of them to use might as well you know take advantage of them as well otherwise there's much cheaper options out there um but if P pc market i just thought was interesting the 1950x was 4172 the 1800 actually beat it at 4300 4368 so then pc market i only have the um PC Mark 8 work. I only have the 1950X, and that was 3,688. But if you could just go off the home score in PC Mark 8, I bet you it might probably be the same with the 1800X, be a little slightly higher. But then again, you don't have a lot of that communication issues. It's more, it's more of a close communication on that as well. Overall, I'm quite impressed with how the 1800X holds its own. But if I was building a gaming machine, I'd probably steer and I had the choice between this processor or the 1800X, I'd probably steer towards the 1800X anyways, or that all-around machine, if those were two were my choices. But then I jumped to the Ashes of Singularity. I did the CPU benchmark on both Vulkan and DX12, and it came out pretty interesting, is that Vulkan was about 22 frames, 22.6 frames per second, while then DX12 was at 25.5 frames per second in the CPU side of test which I was quite impressed with overall that the CPU can do that. So that's some things that maybe, you know, they can use to enhance frames per second. I don't know too much about the, all these uh, Vulkan or DX12 APIs yet. I want to get my hands in and dive into those here pretty soon. We'll see how my schedule opens up so I can do that. But I, as a coder, I'm very interested in trying to see how that evolves to see how you can use that as well. I ran the blender test on this CPU as well, the 1950, and I did the BMW um, test, and you can go out there and grab this as well. Submit your scores below if you want. I'm interested in those as well, but it took three minutes and three seconds, so not too shabby overall. If you, I want to dive into the, the mining side of this real quick. If you guys are into mining, I wouldn't recommend buying this CPU for mining. Your re rate of return is absolutely horrible on it. But um, I was asked by a, f a few people to just let, they want to kind of know what the hash rate is on this. And I was using nice hash and <clears throat> it was kind of interesting. It was like 429 hashes on this, uh, hashes per second in crypto night. And it turns out to be about right now, about 0.11 um, milli bitcoins a day so it's nothing to scoff at it's actually pretty good it probably turns about and i know about where the 580 is it's pretty close to a 580 score a day so quite impressive but again don't buy this just to mine on it if you want to mine for fun or see how it works definitely try it out i, I was using nice hash but uh it's not a, it's something you go out and mine with because it's you know, I think it might be one of the best ones out there to mine on, but you're also paying $1,000. Your rate of return is not there. But um, if you want to go and calculate kind of in your power usage on NiceHash, it's about 174 watts it uses. That's total system watts. I've been taking a look at that a little bit here. I'm running a, uh, I believe it's a platinum uh, power supply, which works out very well. 
and so that does pretty good there but if you want to do a little bit more on this voltage stuff here and I want to get into that uh, a little bit I'm running Vega 2 but uh, just in this system I'm running Vega as well but I was doing idle wattage at about 400 about 107 to 116 watts that's about idle is in between there someplace I've seen it a little bit lower but as Windows runs it's about in that range uh, for a period of time I've seen it dip down to about 90 ish 99 in there so 99 98 97 but um, yeah it's about 107 to 116 constant over all that now when I ran Cinebench it was going all the way up to 273 to 275 watts so that's a quite a bit j jump up you know about anywhere from 160 watts there so it, it can pull a little bit but this is maxing it out nice hash if you run nice hash now I haven't tweaked anything grant I'm not running nice hash just to run it on you know to run it to mine on here so I just put it up ran the benchmark start seeing what it was doing that's 174 watts so a lot less wattage but <clears throat> not something I had tuned for it to see if I can push it more or anything else but that was just uh, some of the things out of there I was able to get this I was running some Prime 95 and running Cinebench and just trying to tr see how much I could really push this thing I got the total system um, to run about 285 watts so only 10 watts more than what it was running with Cinebench but I was able to kind of push it there a little bit now how that translates in the temperatures when I was running, running Prime 95 for about 15 minutes um, I say my apartment is at probably around 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, but in the te idle temperature here was about 36 degrees Celsius and Prime 95 after about oh what was it 20 25 minutes 30 minutes someplace in there it got up to 59 degrees Celsius and then, and it would dip down dip up but it did pretty well overall I think that I can improve some cooling here a little bit but I was quite impressed with it also I want to note when it boosts to 4 gigahertz it goes up to about 3 or 1.375 to 1.43 volts it's way more closer to the 1.375 I've only seen burst above 1.4 volts but that's just something to keep in mind now if you go to a single threading operation it does boost and go into XFR mode 4 gigahertz and stuff like that or above there but I just want to get you know when it boosts when it's boosting up to 4 gigahertz that range so it does hit above 1.4 volts that's just something to note as well but it doesn't seem to uh, hurt anything at all from what I can tell and I've been quite impressed with it it works great and uh, it does a lot what I want to do you know in conclusion to this is that I bought this mainly for so that I could have better you know rendering of videos get that done faster which it does I need to create a better scenario to do benchmarks on just a full render and I'm working on that as well and then I'm also writing software I wanted to try to get some compile times but then I'm like a lot of the stuff that I was going to compile I'm not it's not open so I have to get probably something that's open that can be compiled so we can get some good benchmark comparisons too as well and something that's kind of stable it doesn't <clears throat> maybe something maybe a snapshot that doesn't change over time too much so with that I do want to thank you for watching I recommend to go out and take a look at this processor if you're looking at something with 16 cores 32 threads I recommend it highly especially if you're going in this scenario where you need a lot of cores and you need those uh, if you need PCI lanes another great option for it but I'm super impressed with this it can compile code quite well it renders videos a lot and those are the two main things I use it for and I get a lot of benefit out of it as well so again thank you for watching thank you for stopping by if you got any other questions or anything else leave them in the comments below I'll be more than happy to answer it and if you got something else maybe an idea for a video or a question for a video to be on leave it in the comments as well and I will sure to make a video on it here soon so with that again I want to thank you for watching Thanks for watching Gray Overload. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe.